joined by the president and general manager of the Toronto Raptors, Brian Colangelo. Brian, uh, the night is over. Three draft picks, uh, Terrence Ross. Uh, you went with, with your eighth overall selection. Take us through the entire evening with that selection and then going into the second round. How many phone conversations? How much movement was there potentially? And ultimately, did you feel as though you got the three that you wanted? You know, the draft process is long, tedious. You, you go through a lot leading up to the draft. And then the draft itself, there's some... There's always something new that's thrown at you, and uh, you know we had a, a number of different scenarios in place. Uh, the one that ultimately played out is right where we had, uh, you know, uh, Terrence Ross. Terrence uh, is a player, as I said earlier, that is going to bring, you know, great athleticism, uh, energy, and uh, two things: offense and defense right. to the wing position. And uh, I think he can, uh, you know, come in and make a difference and and, and compete and and. Uh, add to this team but uh, you know I want him to also push a, a guy like DeMar DeRozan every day but at the same time you're going to see them on the floor uh, playing together at times so I would say to you that uh, you know we're very thrilled and, and happy with that pick uh, but then you look at the, the next pick and we start filling boxes out and, and talking about what the other needs are and uh, one of the things that we talked long and hard about is bringing a lot of toughness and, and energy to this team and, uh, and also athleticism in that regard. So uh, Quincy Acey comes from Baylor, and he is pretty much uh, everything that uh, a Reggie Evans brings to the table, uh, just for a comparison that people would understand. Uh, but he brings a little more offensive skill. Uh, he's a terrific player. He's worked on his... Uh, his offensive game over the years at Baylor, and uh, he comes highly touted, highly recommended. He's he's just a wonderful, high character guy that uh, we think is going to add a lot to the team in a variety of ways, not just on the basketball court. And then uh, you know the last pick, Tomislav Zubcic, uh, was something that uh, we we talked about not wanting to put a, a third player in a situation where you bring another player on this roster, so you've got three young players now, three rookies. Uh, on a team where you're competing for time. We wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, this piece, uh, similar to what some other teams did late in the second round, uh, might have been a player to, to keep in Europe and uh, let develop, let season, and see what uh, turns of it. And, you know, you let that pick season, and you see what happens. And it could be valuable in a trade at some point, or he could come join uh, us at some point. Uh, so you let him develop and uh, see, uh, see what comes of it. All right, so now a couple of other seasons really begin. You have free agency mm -hmm. and then also potential trades. Yeah. How active are you going to be and how much do you believe you will be able to get done to change this roster? I know that, that, that can be difficult at this stage to judge, but certainly you have your list in order. Well, the key is to have the flexibility, which we have. Uh, we've talked uh, again about this pre-July 1 and then post-July 1 flexibility. The pre-July 1, uh, we still have about uh, $12 million of cap flexibility right now. So for the next 36, 48 hours, we'll be working uh, to see if there's anything now that the dust settles on the draft, yeah. see what team needs are throughout the, the league, make those assessments, and then decide if there is an opportunity to make a trade. Uh, trades uh, are, are basically, you know, come together when two teams agree. And uh, we can talk all day long. It's just about finding a partner that uh, agrees with the point of view that, that we may have. And in some cases, a third team comes in when there's t uh, more than one team involved. But uh, at the same time, uh, post-July 1, we've got the same flexibility that we've been angling for. And that includes either $10 million of cap space, roughly, uh, or with uh, some qualifying offers that are there, uh, a Sonny Weems, et cetera. You know, we could possibly move that number up to about $12 million, and then we could take it a step further uh, if, if amnesty comes into play. And that's something that we've talked about. It's not a promise that we'll use it, uh, but if uh, things fall right in free agency based on some of the plans that we have, uh, we'll certainly look to uh, you know, expand that uh, space potentially and uh, see what else we can do. But you, you only play that card, the amnesty card, if you've got somewhere to go with it. So we'll, uh, we'll look. We think we're uh, going to be much improved already as it is, bringing in Jonas Valanciunas from last year's draft, the fifth pick overall. Uh, you know, tonight he would have gone number two on the board. We're pretty certain of that. So you add uh, a young athletic wing player who can make shots and defend, 
You add a, a, a five uh, who's got all kinds of energy, athleticism, and great instincts defensively, and now that offense is coming along as well. And uh, you also add some energy and heart and hustle to this team in, in Quincy AC. That's a good chemistry piece, a, a good uh, culture piece for us. And I got to tell you, you know, what Dwayne has done with this team already last year with no personnel changes to add these three, uh, add two talents in, from the draft and then to look at uh, what we might do in free agency, uh, you know, we've got uh, bright hope for the future. Thank you for your time as always. Thank you. Appreciate it, right. Matt. Brian Colangelo, President and General Manager of the Toronto Raptors.